Hello and welcome to 2K Sports. I'm Damon Bruce and it's time for a little NBA basketball. A special presentation of the NBA here on Veterans Day. It'll be Steve Nash and the Phoenix Suns facing off against the Indiana Pacers. 2K Sports presents the NBA. Welcome everyone to this very special NBA presentation on Veterans Day when we salute the men and women who protect our country. Kevin Harlan here alongside Steve Kerr and Clark Kellogg. So happy you've joined us today. We are in Indiana for some Pacers basketball. This hometown crowd ready to go. Sixth game of the season for them and when you're four and one already, you've got a good feeling about each game. Looking at Indiana, They've been terrific in the early going this year. I mean, it looks like all the decisions they made in the offseason were right on point. Their plan's really working for them. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's been impressive what they've done, especially given the fact that the expectations were not that high uh, coming into the season. Uh, so if anything, they, they've just kind of gone about their business quietly, put together a nice solid year uh, to this point, and we'll see if they can keep it rolling. So the opening lineup for the Suns. V.C. and Hill are the wings. Gortat is out there with Channing Fry, and it's Nash in at the one spot. And for Indiana, Granger, Hansborough, and Hibbert are the front court. Collison is out there with Jones. Collison kicks to Granger, takes the three. That's good. Granger's got his first three points of the game. Come on now, you got to pay better attention than that on a shooter like him. He'll make that ten times out of ten. Jones against Carter over Hibbert, and it's Carter missing. And what I love about Danny Granger is he's really good at both ends of the floor. A versatile defender. He can rebound, and of course, offensively, he's dynamic. Nice time to use that foul to stop the layup. You know, if you can save just one point, that foul was the right move. You know, the one thing that's held Danny Granger back early in his career, uh, you know, he's had some injury issues to deal with. Yeah, he has, but last season I thought he was pretty healthy and he carried the burden for the Pacers offensively if he can get a little help in that area though I think it would serve him very well he's perfect from the line this time you know for the Pacers last season they really had a difficult time against Western Conference teams I mean only going 9 and 21 in those matchups there's a screen by Gortat. Three-pointer. And it's Carter again missing. And here's Indiana. It's a five-point game. They put up a nice win against the Bucks the last time out. I thought they showed just how good they can be defensively as a team. They made it very difficult for anybody to find an open look out there. Yeah, that was the preeminent factor in the game to me. I mean, just the great job they did in, at the defensive end of the floor. And now Doris Burke has an update from the sidelines. Hey, Kevin. Well, I had a chance to talk with head coach Alvin Gentry. They are up against Danny Granger, who is a guy who can hurt them in a lot of different ways. He talked about what his team needs to do to slow down Granger. One key will be to make sure he has to work for every shot, saying if we let him just catch and shoot in the corner, we're toast. We have to make him work for every shot he gets. Always great to hear from you, Doris. You talked about the troubles, Clark, against the Western Conference. For whatever reason, Steve, they struggled to defend Western Conference opponents. Well, I thought the uh, the biggest thing was the West was so much deeper than the East last year, uh, Kevin. Uh, the East had some strong teams at the top, but overall, uh, a weaker field of teams. When you go out West, and on a nightly basis, you're going against a really tough team. I think that's the disparity in the numbers for Indiana. And again, it's the Suns missing. Still looking for that first two. Oh, four now. Outside Collison. Releases from 15. 
And there are the Pacers with another bucket. Well, I think this is the start they wanted. Come out and put some points up early. Three of four so far. And first time out of the game called for Phoenix. Coming off that loss against the Timberwolves. I thought they forced a lot of shots offensively, guys. They, they just didn't seem organized or efficient uh, at that end of the floor. And, uh, that's why they got so stagnant and shot such a poor percentage. Couldn't agree more. Disorganized would be a word. Dysfunctional. I mean, way too many times they're going one-on-one -on -one or running the shot clock all the way down and then having to jack some crazy shot up. That was the problem, just not organized. While we have a chance, let's take a look at the best free throw shooters in the league from last season. And you take a look at Steve Nash, one of the league's best, third in free throw percentage. And that's what you like to see from the foul line, guys that are comfortable, confident, and consistent. Free throws are a big part of the game, and this guy was one of the best in the league. Now here is Carter. Nine points last game out. Nash outside. Grant Hill on the wing. Defended by Jones. Shot clock at five. Shot to stop the run. And it's Nash missing. Bill can't quite get anything to fall after five tries. Left side, Callison. Guarded now by Nash. Collison against Nash. Pushes up. Suns trail by nine. Outside Hill. Back to Nash. Tries for the alley-oop. Got a piece of it. It's stolen by Hansbro. Boy, a lot of darkness there. No daylight to get that ball through. The dive for the ball. Out of bounds. And they'll keep possession. Here we are in November, and let's see how things are going out east in the early season. You look at Miami. Right now, they're off to a fast start. First place in the conference. And, of course, there's the Pacers right on their tail. Looking at Indiana, they've been terrific in the early going this year. I mean, it looks like all the decisions they made in the offseason were right on point. Their plan's really working for them. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's been impressive what they've done, especially given the fact that the expectations were not that high uh, coming into the season. Uh, so if anything, they, they've just kind of gone about their business quietly, put together a nice solid year uh, to this point, and we'll see if they can keep it rolling. Hansbro is screen on Nash. Collison kicks to Granger for the three. It's hauled in by the Suns. This their first chance this season playing the Pacers. Well, some called their series last year kind of a measuring stick for which conference was the better one, and they represented their conference pretty well. Now here is Hill, still looking to get on the scoreboard. Lays it up, and despite of the excellent defense at that. Well, we'll see if that shot breaks things open a little bit. It's been a slow start. Hopefully that gets them on the right track here, Steve. Steve just talked about it. These teams were in very similar positions in their respective conference standings last season. And, Kevin, they made their conference look pretty good by taking both of those games. Here's Hibbert. An 11-point game for him in the win against Milwaukee. Fade away, and the Pacers can't get it to go. Did you see his balance there, guys? Really faded away. I think that's why he missed. Gord's out with his screen on Collison. Nash with it. He had a 15-point outing in their last game against Minnesota. Hill kicks it over to Nash. Over Collison. Nash with the bucket. Nash has got his first bucket of the night. Pacers leading by five. Well, Gortat was a really nice pickup for the Suns. He was a backup to Dwight Howard in Orlando. Never really got the minutes that he deserved. And the Suns gave him that opportunity, and he made the most of it. Now, here's Hansbro. The shot by Collison. That doesn't go either for Collison. 
There's no getting around the simple fact that that's a shot he has to knock down. Grant Hill on the wing. Ranger covering. Collison against Nash. Nash right side. Over Collison. Nash's shot is off. And Gortat has really given the Suns that presence they so desperately needed in the paint. He's been just what the doctor ordered for the Phoenix Ball Club. Well, I love his size. He's got a big body. He's active. He's an excellent offensive rebounder, Kevin. And he's not a bad finisher around the rim. So he's shown that he's a he's a starting caliber center. Although I think he's, his best role is maybe as a reserve. I just think he brings that element that's um, special when he when you're of his talent when you can come off the bench. Words out the former backup to Dwight Howard over in Orlando before the trade to Phoenix. He is extremely comfortable behind that three-point line. I mean, especially when you give him that kind of room to operate. Outside Collison. Backing down is Hibbert. It's good from in tight. Hibbert's got his second basket. Here's Nash. About three and a half minutes left here in the first quarter. Well, prior to last season, the Suns decided to let Amari Stoudemire leave for free agency. They were concerned that with all of his injuries, he just, they just couldn't justify giving him a, a long-term big deal. Jeff Foster's checked in for Indiana. Rush comes in for Dante Jones. Then for the Suns, Lopez comes in for Gortat. And Dudley subbed in for Vince Carter. Here's Collison. He's coming off a 10-point game against Milwaukee. Well, Steve, that's what, you know, I'm sure you'd agree, that's what makes this Sun story so interesting. They let Amari go to the Knicks, but then they, they turned around with a completely different front office and spent almost as much on Jenning Fry, Josh Childress, and, and Clark Hakeem Warwick. It seemed at times a little confusing. Yeah, baffling would be another word to use there. I mean, historically, Kevin, those mid-level deals for average players can be just as risky. So some interesting choices by the Suns' top brass, and we'll see how they pan out. You need to give them a little time, but that usually takes a little longer than you want it to. Granger for the three. The shot's good. Collison making the play. And it's a seven-point pacer lead. Nash kicks to Lopez. Foster on him. Good look. And Lopez gets it to go. Yeah, he's so good from that mid-range area. Pacers leading by five. Back to Granger. Outside Collison. Guarded now by Nash. Six on the shot clock from the baseline. The shot is off. And Phoenix will take it the other way. 153 left to play in the first quarter. He passes to Dudley. Beyond the arc. Another three for Phoenix. I tell you what, he'll be quite contented to sit out there beyond the arc and knock down shot after shot if they're going to play defense like that. Tighten it up out there. Here's Rush. There's a screen by Hansbro. And Rush kicks to Granger. Another miss by Granger. Boy, from my angle, it looked like it was in the bottom of the net. Looked good from here. Yeah, I thought so too, Clark. It's stolen by Hansbro. This has to drive a coach crazy. That's his third turnover already here in the first quarter. Well, he's got to fall back and get back to the game plan. I mean, his execution has been very uneven and inconsistent so far. Here's Hill. And here's Fry from the arc. Count that one. Fry has got himself going there. His first points of the game on the deep ball. Now Collison, guarded now by Nash. It's Rush outside, and the rebound goes to Nash. Nash has got three rebounds so far in the game. Now here's Dudley. Back to Nash. Picked up by Collison. Down to five on the shot clock. 
So they take the lead. Nash has got his second basket of the night. Now you can't give him any space out there. Outside Collison. Over Nash. And Darren Collison again. Collison's got six points. And a good game so far as we conclude the first quarter. Pacers lead by one. I was impressed with their transition game, guys. They really got out and ran the lanes. Yeah, they did. I mean, no better way to get easy buckets than through fast breaks. Don't go away. Back in just a moment. Tune in next Wednesday. Rajon Rondo and the Boston Celtics go up against LeBron James and the Miami Heat. The new season in the NBA rolls on. It's the real deal. Well, up to this point, a closely contested game as we start the second quarter. Here is Brooks. 11 points for him in that last game against the Timberwolves in Minneapolis. So with Nash sitting on the bench, here's who Alvin Gentry's going with. Brooks out there with Carter. Then there's Channing Fry. Then there's Jared Dudley. And it's Gortat in at the center position. And here's Collison, guarded now by Aaron Brooks. Jones with it. Six to shoot from the top of the key. And it's Phoenix with the rebound. Dudley's got three rebounds so far in the game. I think Darren Collison is penciled in as the Pacers point guard of the future. And with blazing speed and a really insatiable appetite for the game, the future's bright for him. Now here is Carter. He dishes it to Brooks. Over Collison. Again, the miss by Brooks. Well, Darren Collison's shooting percentages fell back to earth a bit last season following his scintillating rookie season. But, Steve, he's still plenty dangerous offensively. Well, he's so quick, and uh, you know he can get around his defender at will, and he's added that jump shot. He's gotten much better with that shot. So, uh, Darren Collison, a guy who can beat you in a lot of different ways. Here's Brooks. And he was fouled on the way up. Two free throws now for him. Kind of a strange season for Aaron Brooks last year, guys. He was unhappy when Houston didn't give him a contract extension, so the Rockets eventually traded him to Phoenix for Goran Dragic. And that one falls for Brooks. You know, Steve, when you talk about Aaron Brooks and every point you made is a good one, it wasn't really a, the best of fits for him, and I think here in Phoenix it has been a nice fit. He's got speed and shooting ability, and he can definitely play an up-tempo game, and that's Phoenix's style. Good on both. You know, guys, despite the fact that the Suns fell off a little bit at home last season, they hung pretty tough against the East, going 17-13 and 13 in matchups against the other conference. Now here's Collison. He has six. On the wing, Jones. And it's Carter picking him up. Jones dishes to Collison. Still trying to get into the swing of things here offensively. It just has not happened for him here. Brooks outside. The dish to Carter. George against Brooks. Stolen by George. Well, if the defender doesn't buy the pump fake, there's a good chance he's going to be able to tip that ball loose. And that's the problem when you don't protect the ball. Exactly. When you surrender the ball like that, you put your defense at a huge disadvantage. Well, going back to the record, the Clark of last year, they struggled against the West, but you're right. They still had a winning record against the East. Well, that's to be expected, Kevin. The East was the weaker conference top to bottom. Uh, and, of course, the Suns, their style was maybe a little different uh, for those Eastern Conference teams to adapt to. And maybe Phoenix caught them off guard a little bit. Fry, good. Here's Collison. Carter 
Guarded now by Aaron Brooks. Here's George. Pocket six. Hangs in the air, and the layup is good. George has got four this quarter. What a finish with that hoop. Now Brooks picked up by Collison. Carter, the pass to Brooks. Back to Carter. Fires for three. Pacers with the rebound. Their biggest lead of the game was nine. Now here's Collison. He's got six. Here is McRoberts. Collison against Carter. The fader. That's blocked. Now let's take a look at the most efficient scores in the NBA from last year's campaign. Look at Gortat. Fourth in the league and as consistent as they come. Now that's the name of the game for him. Just putting the ball in the bucket. How about the season he had a year ago? And some changes here for the Pacers. Tyler Hansbrough's checked in for Josh McRoberts. Rush comes in for Dante Jones. And George Hills subbed in for Darren Collison. Then for the Suns, Hakeem Warwick. He's checked in for Fry. And it's Hill in for Jared Dudley. Carter outside. Back to Brooks. Carter outside. Over George. And again, it's the Suns missing. I think he's just got to compose himself, gather himself. He may be trying a little too hard out there. Let it flow. Let it happen. Don't force it. Now here is Hill. And here is Brooks. Some nice passing. Defended by George. And there's the whistle. Fouled hard on the shot. He'll go to the line. You know, I think it was really exciting for this Pacers team getting into the postseason last year for the first time in five years, guys. I mean, the youth help as we saw the passion come out in that game four win against the Bulls. And I thought they competed very well in that series and have some promise going forward. First one falls for him. Clark, I agree with you. You know, brought the Pacers making it into the postseason. They were the eighth seed, but really did a, a good job mm -hmm. against a very talented Chicago team, Steve. Yeah, very tough opponents. Anytime you're going up in that first round against a team like the Bulls as an eighth seed, I mean, you get to see what a team like that's made of. And I think that young Pacers squad really uh, accounted for itself in, in, a, in a good way in that playoff run. We'll see if they can take advantage and, and really have a good season this year. Hill kicks to Hibbert. Brooks covering. Shoots. Indiana again missing. The Suns trailing. Carter outside. Over Hill. Vince Carter the bucket on the assist by Brooks. Seven points for Vince Carter. So the Pacers call timeout their first of the game. Well, the Pacers historically have always been tough on their home court. And last season was no different. 24 and 17 in Indianapolis. One of the reasons the Pacers made the playoffs. See how things are shaking out in the West early in the season. You look at Dallas. Long way to go still in the season, but even so, they've got the top spot. And, of course, there's the Suns. They're the ninth best team in the conference. Well, right now for the Suns, they've been smack dab in the middle of the pack and just haven't been able to climb the ladder. They've been stuck in kind of a middling form. Yeah, they've just sort of been hovering there uh, in the middle of the pack. And 
you know, this is not a very exciting team, and um, I think that's a problem. I mean, you, you've got to give your fans some hope, and uh, this team to this point just kind of ho home. Brooks with it. Carter dish it to Brooks. Fires from deep. Pacers with the rebound. Hibbert's got his fifth rebound right now in the game. I'm just so impressed with the work Roy Hibbert has put in since his final year at Georgetown. He's lost a lot of weight. He's gotten himself in terrific condition. And he's a very skilled player down on the block. Now Brooks. Carter, the pass to Warwick. Fires it up. Hill pulls it in. And Steve, you're right about Roy Hibbert. Last season got off to a hot start. He had lost about 25 pounds doing martial arts. All those different workouts associated with that over the summer. He also addressed a undetected asthma problem, which uh, Clark helped his endurance. Yeah, it did help his endurance. But I think as the season went on, he thought, Roy thought maybe he had gotten too light by, by year's end. And now he's gotten back up to around 260. And again, it's not just what you weigh, but it's what kind of strength you have and where is the weight. He needs a little more lower body strength to anchor him. And the right kind of weight and muscle is going to continue to allow him to, to be a very effective center in the NBA. Hill kicks to George. He feeds it to Hansbrough. He's against Ward. He goes up. Rebound by the Suns. And I think whichever team starts to dominate the glass could really take control of this game. I won't disagree with you. I mean, it's so tight between these teams right now on the board that... Um, you're just waiting to see which team might pull away. Seems to be getting better as this game goes on. Hibbert with a screen on Brooks. Outside Hill. Backing down is Hibbert. And once again off the mark by Indiana. You know, with very little defense there, that's a shot he should be taking and making. Here's Hill. Chance there to take the lead, missing. And it's the Pacers' ball. Their biggest lead of the game was nine. Hill kicks to George. Hibbert against Dorzat. Now here is George. He's got seven. Shoots over Gortzot. A nice shot by George. George has got nine points now in the quarter. They're hovering around 50% for the game in three-pointers. That's pretty good. But they've really elevated here in the second quarter. Timeout called the Suns. Well, the Suns missed the playoffs a year ago, and there's a lot of speculation about whether they will begin a rebuilding process. Steve Nash obviously getting up there in years. Uh, so the question for Phoenix, do they trade him? Do they keep him? Do they still try to build around him? One thing's for sure, they need an infusion of young talent. Jim Boy, we have a chance now to show you which teams led the league in three-point percentage last year. Fourth, the Suns. Seemed like they went through stretches, guys, where they just didn't miss from beyond the arc, and that carried those numbers right up to the top of the list. Some changes for Indiana. Jeff Foster's checked in for Hibbert. Granger comes in for George. And it's Jones in for Brandon Rush. Phoenix also making some changes. Robin Lopez is checked in for Gortat. Fry comes in for Hakeem Warwick. And it's Nash in for Aaron Brooks. Now here's Nash. He's guarded by Hill. Right up. Nash with the bucket. Nash has got his third bucket of the night. Hill with it. Guarded now by Nash. From 20 feet out, Hill pulls it in. That's a good shot, high percentage. Can't complain about that one. 
blocked. Now, here's Hansbrough. An 11 point game for him in the win against the Bucks in Milwaukee. And the basket by Jones. Boy, that is a sweet feed from his teammate there. The Suns trailer. Nash outside. Carter kicks to Lopez. Back to Carter. And there's the pass to Fry. Another three for Phoenix. Well, you've got to get the ball out of his hands. Bring an extra defender and force somebody else to beat you. I agree with you. Make him give it up. Outside Hill. Shot clock at six. And he can't answer back. The three-pointer offline. And Phoenix has possession. Hill. Danny Granger pulls it in. 24 seconds left in the second quarter. Hill kicks to Hansbro. Here's Foster. From about 19 feet. On the basket by Jones. Jones has got six. There's 10 seconds left to play here in the half. With one on the clock, no good on the buzzer beater. Back in a moment from Indianapolis. Hello and happy Veterans Day. An important day to reflect and remember. And also important for us to get to the first half stats on the HP Halftime Report. Out in Indiana, the Pacers are in front against Phoenix. On a winning track to start the season, and this game's no different. Some great work out there by Paul George. How's that for a shooting percentage? A hundred. Yes, 100% from the court. Not too bad. On the other side, the Suns also putting up numbers. They're gunning from distance. The three-pointer's been their prime weapon. Steve Nash getting it done early. He has six points and has been contributing on the boards, too. We've got a pair of guys here who've been huge factors so far tonight. Let's start things off with a look at what's coming up later tonight. It'll be the magic out at Amway Center against the Wizards. 7 p.m. Eastern tip time. And another game that's coming up, the Bucks will face off against the 76ers out in Philadelphia. Start time, 7 o'clock Eastern. And now here's what's going on in the rest of the association. The Lakers are playing at Staples Center as they go up against the Nuggets. A 7.30 Eastern time is tip-off. And that'll do it for us here. Let's get you back out to Kevin Harlan and the 2K broadcasting crew for the second half. Welcome back, everybody. The start of the second half getting underway. Both teams battling hard through the first half. Here's Nash. Granger, Hansborough, and Hibbert are the front court. Jones is out there with Collison. That's the Pacers' five. And Fry backs in. Collison against Nash. Hill, Vince Carter on the wing. Just five on the clock. Over Jones. And it's Carter missing. And Vince Carter's career appears to be winding down. The Orlando Magic traded him last season to the Phoenix Suns. And he has definitely slowed down. Once one of the most athletic players in the league. Uh, but he's aging for sure. Now here's Hibbert. Vince Carter missing his last shot. Here's Nash. And Steve, you mentioned that that trade sending Vince Carter away from his hometown of Orlando to Phoenix did make him too happy. And, and Clark, you know, that sometimes uh, people probably underestimate that degree of a trade, moving family, yourself, from one city to another. That's a great point you make there, Kevin. There's a lot of moving parts that go into that, not just the player on the court. Uh, he is getting a little worried, perhaps, that he's at the end of the window for him maybe re winning the championship, a trade from the Magic to the Suns uh, wasn't going to exactly help in that pursuit of a ring. Here's Jones. Oh, good with the triple. It's a neck-and-neck -neck game here in Indiana. Pass to Gortat. 
and stolen by Hibbert. And here we go. All alone, and no mistakes on the layup. Eight points for Collison. No prettier shot than the finger roll, smooth and beautiful. It's a joy to see. Well, despite Steve Nash's amazing play on the offensive end, the Suns' defense just couldn't make enough stops to help that team get into the playoffs. The defensive deficiencies, just too much to overcome. That's not his shot there, guys. And whether you play D on him or not, he's, he's usually going to miss that one. Granger backing him down. He's guarded by Hill from downtown. The shot is off. And Phoenix will take it the other way. Well, Steve, let me give you some numbers here. The Suns defense, sixth worst in the NBA last season. Down from Clark number 12 the season before. And you know, Amari Stoudemire, not known as an elite defender, but he did give them an interior presence. Um, hopefully, Gortat can give them some of that toughness inside this season. And here's Collison. He's got eight. Guarded now by Nash. Here's Jones. The shot's good. Collison making the play. Jones has got eight points. Boy, they've done a lot of their damage from mid-range here, guys. I mean, knocking down those shots with regularity. Yeah, how about eight of their last ten points, guys, coming off that mid-range area jump shot. So, shows you, you don't have to be at the rim to score. Carter kicks to Fry for the lead. Another three for Phoenix. Another open look hits bottom from outside. Yep, and that's three of their last five makes from beyond the arc. Allison with it. Now Hibbert. The feed now to Jones. And it's Carter picking him up. Here's Granger. And there are the Pacers with another bucket. Good team play there. You move the ball until you find the right shot for the right person. They're a well-oiled machine, Steve. I mean, working extremely well as a cohesive unit. Every pass delivered on time and on target. A lot of ball movement and player movement. It's a thing of beauty. Here's Nash. After Danny Granger's bucket. Here's Gortat. Hibbert pulls it in. Hibbert's got his seventh rebound of the game with that last one. Outside Collison. Guarded now by Nash. Outside Collison. Six to shoot. Here's Hansbro. Hill pulls it in. Hill's got three rebounds now in this one. Nash against Collison. Now here is Carter. 11 points in the game. They're moving it around. Shoots off the screen. Hill, no good. Well, with that much space off the pick, you've got to drop that in. Yeah, you got to make that one. I mean, that's a high-quality shot you should make nine out of ten times. Now here's Collison. Eight points for him. Granger dishes to Hibbert. Phoenix grabs the miss. Fry has got his fifth rebound right now in the game. Nash against Hibbert. But they recover it and gets hacked by the D. He'll go to the line. down the first one. Indiana making some changes. Josh McRoberts has checked in for Hibbert. And it's George in for Tyler Hansbrough. Jared Dudley's checked in for the Suns. Beatrice comes in for Vince Carter. That one is no good. He couldn't make them all, but at least he got this game tied up. Collison the pass to George. Granger is tagged with the loose ball foul. That's his first foul. A few unsuccessful trips in a row, and we're still knotted up. 
Jones against Petrus. It's stolen. Good defense there. He was just waiting for that one. Jones, no luck. Shooting-wise, he's having a tough quarter. I mean, he just seems to have gone cold. Can't find the basket. Nash outside. Picked up by Collison. The three from Dudley. Good, and the assist goes to Nash. Nash has got four assists now tonight. Pacers trail by three. You know, Petrus wasn't getting an awful lot of playing time last season before the argument he had with head coach Stan Van Gundy last November. But when that happens, the minutes even got squeezed tighter. Mm -hmm. Now here's Jones. He's got eight. And the Pacers can't get it to go. Suns leading by three. Clark back to Petrus. He saw even less time on the floor in Phoenix. And Steve, did that surprise you from afar? It did, because uh, you look at Petrus and he's versatile as a defender. He can knock down threes. It looked like he'd be a good fit next to Steve Nash on the perimeter. Uh, and yet, uh, as the season wound down, he got fewer and fewer minutes. So, uh, interesting that he didn't quite fit in there. Timeout called the Pacers. You know, one of the things I love about Steve Nash, although he is right-handed, he loves to use that little pull-up jumper he has when he's going to his left. He's pretty ambidextrous, and I think that goes back to all of the time he spent playing soccer. He's mm. equally balanced on both sides Good of his point. body, and I see that with a lot of soccer players. UK leaderboard provides us now with this list of last season's assist leaders. Number one, Steve Nash. Well, he was the top dime dropper in the league. I mean, he led the league in assists, and his vision and his willingness to give up the ball made him the top dime dropper. Here's Ranger. He's got 12. They're moving the ball. And stolen by Nash. Suns on offense. They're on a 14-6 run. Feeds to Dudley. Fires the three. There it is. It's Nash picking up the assists. Nash has got six assists in the game. Here is Collison. Eight points for him. Guarded now by Nash. Outside Collison. Shot from the wing. No luck. And Phoenix will take it the other way. Another rebound gobbled up. They are pounding the boards. And a big part of the lead, guys, is because of the work they've done on the glass. I mean, they have the lead because they've rebounded well. Now here's Petrus. Eight-point game. A chance to extend the lead to double digits, but it's no good. Collison against Dudley. Dudley gets a hand on it, but he stays with it. Tries again. Another block. Suns leading by eight. Picked up by Collison. And here's Nash. Six points for him. Six on the shot clock. Defended by Jones. Again, Phoenix. He continues to do everything well out there. You know what? And it's really hard, based on that, to determine what he's done best so far. Timeout called the Pacers. And Coach could tell they were out of sync. So he's going to try to straighten it out.
And some changes here for the Pacers. Roy Hibbert's checked in for Josh McRoberts. Hansborough comes in for Dante Jones. And George Hills subbed in for Darren Collison. Phoenix also making some changes. Robin Lopez is checked in for Gortat. Warwick comes in for Channing Fry. And it's Carter in for Michael Petrus. 135 left to play in the third. And here's Hill for three. There's the bucket. Good. Yeah, he's always going to pull the trigger when you give him that kind of look. Here's Nash. He's got eight. Poked away. Great defensive work right there. The quick hands lead to the turnover. And that's the problem when you don't protect the ball. Exactly. When you surrender the ball like that, you put your defense at a huge disadvantage. He's picked up by Hill. Carter outside. Back to Nash. So now that's twice we've seen the offense collapse. That's back-to-back -back empty trips because of turnover. Yeah, and that's going to be a problem because now all of a sudden you start turning the ball over. You lose all offensive rhythm and flow. That's really a terrific look inside, Kevin. I mean, he set him up beautiful. He's picked up by Hill. Nash kicks to Carter. And they get it. And good on the basket. Book it. Carter's got five points now this quarter. They're just giving up a ton of three-pointers. Yeah, they, you know, it's tough to close out on a team when they space the floor and they've got guys that can shoot it that way and they've got it going, but you got to find a way. Now here's Granger. He's got 14. Hansbro is screen on Dudley. Up off the screen. No good on the layup. Oh, well, they're now plus five in the rebound category, really controlling the glass. And rebounding is one of those non-glamour stats. I mean, it takes work and effort and tenacity and physicality. But when you look at the scoreboard, you can see the correlation. Yeah, he's a fighter, a battler, guys. I mean, always has been. Well, that's finished, Clark. You're right. Strong offensive rebound leads right into the slam. Yeah, that's his identity. He's an energy player who's always going to bring it every night. Shots continuing to fall as we conclude the third quarter. Both teams putting up points. Vince Carter really making a difference here. Well, we know he can score, so it's not really a huge shock to see him put up these kind of big numbers. And I would think that he most likely will continue to carry on this kind of play into the fourth. It's more NBA coming your way. The NBA season kicks into gear. Derrick Rose and the Chicago Bulls go up against LaMarcus Aldridge and the Portland Trail Blazers next Wednesday, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. So as we get rolling here in the fourth, let's go to our sideline reporter, Doris Burke, for the Sprite Spark Report. Doris? Hey, guys. Well, it was the stretch by the Suns that garners the Sprite Spark today. Things started opening up for them in the third quarter as they exerted their will onto this game, and they are in complete control as the game now heads into the fourth and final period, guys. Okay, Doris, thank you. And that run, Clark, really changed the complexion of this game. Yeah, it sure did. I thought it stirred something up in them that got them on a good run. Yeah, got the ball rolling for them, and they were able to keep it going from there, guys. A moment now to reset the lineups. Back to us by Gatorade. All fueled up here for the fourth quarter. And Phoenix, look at who they've got on the floor. They've got Gortat. Hill out there with Josh Childress. Then it's Brooks, and it's Carter in at the two guard. Really strong performance by them so far in the glass. You know, the lead they have in the rebounding category is also part of the reason they're on top on the scoreboard as well. Here's Gortat. The rebound by Hansborough. Pacers trail by eight. Here's Jones. Off on the layup. Hill inside. Hansborough's there. Out of bounds. And they'll keep possession. And a chance now to check out the schedule for Indiana. Next up for them, the Knicks, a road game in New York. That'll be just one game played away from home for them. Here is Carter. 
Gortat with a screen on George. Carter dishes to Gortat. Blocked again. Now Hill. Guarded now by Aaron Brooks. Brooks against Hill. Passes it to Hansbro. Jones. Bangs home the trifecta. Jones has got the first field goal of the fourth quarter here for the Pacers. Jones against Carter. And so it's going to be a three-second violation out there on the defense. I'll tell you what, after that uh, great 2010 campaign for Dante Jones, everything seemed to go wrong last year. He really had to fight for his time on the floor and never really developed into that full-time rotational player for his club. And so he hits the technical free throw. You know, thinking about Dante Jones, Clark, a coaching change and some other upheaval really didn't help him either. No, it didn't, but you know what? Late in the season, he actually found his way back in the rotation, but it's always difficult when you're in transition as a team, particularly when you've got coaching changes and some personnel changes as well. Here's Hill. Basket good. And the Suns lead by eight. Well, you hate to see a guy suffer through a game like this, but his team is winning. Outside Hill. George with the ball. Up with it. Hibbert. And again, it's Indiana converting. You know what? That's what you like to see. A perfect pass leading him right into the shot. Didn't even have to break stride. Brooks outside. Jones is whistled for reaching in. That's his first foul. And some changes here for the Pacers. Granger comes in for George. And it's Collison in for George Hill. And then for Phoenix. Fry comes in for Gortat. And Petra subbed in for Childress. Now here is Carter. Dishes it to Petrus. For three. It's rebounded by Indiana. Hansbrough's got his fourth rebound in this one. Now Hibbert. Just five to shoot. Here's Collison. Rebound by Petrus. Early on, he tried to shoot his way out of this funk. But later in the game now, he might want to just give it up and look for his teammates to do the score. Now here's Brooks. It's up a three. And the rebound goes to the Pacers. They've trailed by as many as ten points. Now here's Hansbro. There's a screen by Hansbro. Here's Collison. That doesn't go either for Collison. Misfires again, and the ball just refuses to cooperate with him. Tough day so far. Brooks up on top. He's covered by Collison. Shoots the three, and no one able to grab it as it goes out of bounds. Here's what Phoenix has lined up on their schedule. Next up for them, the Bucks in Milwaukee. That'll be game four of the six-game road trip. Here is Collison. Kicks to Hansbro. He kicks it to Hibbert. Brooks against Collison. Lock at six. Ranger against Carter. Ranger misses. Well, I tell you what, really a good job to get open and then just kind of botch the release. Brooks up on top. He's covered by Collison. Again, the miss by Brooks. He's just been ice cold. I mean, he, he cannot find the range. Granger for the three. The shot's good. Collison making the play. 
17 points for Danny Granger. And this is someone that can really hurt you from long range. He did that to a degree in the first half, and he's doing it now. And the Suns call time. Kevin, a little factoid here about Danny Granger. You know, he came out of Mexico but played his first two years at Bradley and became the first ever Lobo to record 60 assists, 60 blocks, and 60 steals in a season. Get this update now from Doris Burke is across the way on the sideline. Guys, over that last break, I listened in on Alvin Gentry's huddle. He told his team to keep looking for three-point opportunities, saying their perimeter defense isn't doing a good job getting out on our shooters. So let's keep firing away until they decide to guard us. All right, Doris, thank you very much. And Gortzak kicks to Dudley. Buries it from three-point range. Dudley's got nine points here in the second half. Outside Collison. He dishes it to Posey. Grant Hill covering. No good from the wing. Suns leading by six. Nash outside. It's taken away by Collison. Well, that was not an easy play, but he made it look routine. Stops. Pops, and there are the Pacers with another bucket. Here's Hill. And Granger comes over to help. Collison against Nash. Five to shoot. No luck. And it's the Pacers taking it the other way. They've trailed by as many as 10 points. On the wing hill, he's guarded by Dudley. Granger backing him down. The jump hook. Gortzot comes up with the rebound. Gortzot's got six rebounds now in the game. He passes to Dudley. Hill against Granger. And here's Fry for three. That is good. And the Suns lead by seven. Tell you what, he's draining the three ball at will, guys. Yeah, he is, and they've got to find a way to get out there on him. Timeout called the Pacers. Well, I love what Grant Hill represents. Such a great statesman for the game, Kevin. I mean, he's won the NBA Sportsmanship Award three times. He's the only player to win it more than once. Checked in for Indiana. Jones comes in for George Hill. Vince Carter, he's checked in for Phoenix. Here's Hibbert. Now the dish to Hansbro. Collison. Guarded now by Nash. Nash against Collison. Shot clock at six. Easy shot. Hansborough, that's good. Here's Nash. Picked up by Collison. 
Carter, right side. He feeds it to Gortat. He's against Hibbert. Shoots from 12. Bunny shot. And the Suns tack on two more. Those are what we call confidence building blocks. Pacers trail by seven. Here's Collison. Guarded now by Nash. Granger passes to Hansbro. Jumps up, and he converts the layup. Yeah, that's just too easy. He, he is so skilled inside. Here's Hill. Granger covering. Hill dishes to Gorton. Takes it up. Granger with the defensive effort. Clark, they've shared the load offensively. Yeah, they've done a nice job with it, Kevin and Steve. I mean, everybody's touching the ball. There's a nice flow to what they're doing offensively. Well, it makes it so much tougher to defend, too, when you have to account for all five offensive players, and the ball just moves so quickly. Tough to defend that. That free throw good from Collison. Well, Darren Collison in this one, 13 points, and he's been delivering a healthy dose of helpers, too. Yeah, he really is. He's always looking to make the passes. Head up, eyes up, trying to find the open team. And it's Gortat finishing it off. Well, the big fella's showing us a little explosiveness for a change. Well, maybe Clark is working on his dunk skills because he looked perfectly at home right there. Yeah, sometimes he can find those, so I'm glad to see him get that one down. Timeout called the Pacers. They're trailing by four. There's 154 left in the fourth quarter. Here's Collison. Grand Hill covering. Granger defended by Nash. Pulls it up. And Hansbro slams it in. And the Suns call time. They're up by two. 144 left in the fourth quarter. One forty-four left to play here in the fourth. It's Vince Carter on the wing, defended by Jones. And Vince Carter with the slam. You know, that's just a thing of beauty, guys. I mean, that move to the bucket right there, splendid. And a powerful finish to go along with it. Hey, I thought the defense gave him a little too much leeway right there. Now here's Granger. Grand Hill covering. Hensbrook. Hill pulls it in. Hill's got six rebounds in the game. Solid advantage in the rebounding totals for them so far here. You know, in every game, but particularly in a close game, every little advantage you can use helps, and they're certainly enjoying one on the glass here. And the Suns tack on two more. Kevin, it's really hard to deny this guy the offensive board if he's got even the slightest position inside. He'll take advantage of any little sliver you give him. Granger backing him down. Back to Collison. The pass to Granger. Open look. Connects! And now they trail by just four. Maybe the pressure, the weight of expectation starting to sink in now as he looks like he's second-guessing his shot, not letting it go with the same confidence we saw earlier. Now here's Nash. Six on the shot clock. A three is launched. Another three for Phoenix. Looking to close this game out strong here. Yeah, this one will be put away. If they can get just a few more buckets, you can put it on ice. And the Pacers call time here. 
They trail by seven. There's 25 seconds left in the fourth quarter of this one. There's 25 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Collison against Nash. Nash against Collison. That's tipped. Hensbro. Here's Fry. Carter kicks to Nash. So the Suns win it. It was a solid win, Clark. Yeah, it was, and I think it came down to will more than skill. They went out and got this one. Well, that'll do it. For Doris Burke, Steve Kerr, and Clark Kellogg, this is Kevin Harlan saying so long. We'll see you next time. And as we leave, we give you our Jordan player of the game, Channing Fry.